In this video, we'll be demystifying celiac disease and going over the causes, pathophysiology, symptoms, diagnoses, and treatments. What is celiac disease? It is a chronic autoimmune condition where exposure to gluten causes an immune response, leading to inflammation in the small intestine, damaging the villi lining it, and preventing proper nutrient absorption. It is estimated to affect every one in 100 people worldwide. What exactly is gluten? It's a protein found in wheat, rye, and barley, and it's made up of two proteins known as gliadin and glutenin, with gliadin being the main cause for inflammation. Gluten can be found in most baked goods, pasta, bread, beer, some processed foods, and medications. Celiac disease is typically introduced in childhood, but can develop as an adult after eating foods or taking medicine containing gluten. Early diagnosis can lower chances of developing other conditions such as type 1 diabetes, thyroid disease, anemia, or infertility. It's mainly caused by a genetic predisposition. In fact, people with a parent, child, or sibling with celiac disease possess a 1 in 10 risk. The DQ2 and DQ8 gene alleles predispose a person to celiac, and around 1% of people with at least one of these two gene copies will develop the disease. Experts believe that experiencing a higher number of digestive tract infections early in life may increase the likelihood of developing celiac disease. Much is still unknown about possible environmental causes. Small intestine is the organ that is most directly involved in celiac disease. It is located between the stomach and the large intestine. Inside the small intestine is the lumen through which food passes during digestion. Surround the lumen is the inner intestinal lining or intestinal epithelium, which is formed from a single layer of cells called enterocytes, and is where most nutrients are absorbed into the body. The structure of the intestinal lining consists of finger-like projections called villi, with invagination between them called cribs. Each individual enterocyte also has microvilli on its surface. These structures are crucial for proper digestion because they increase the surface area of the intestinal epithelium, allowing nutrients to be absorbed more efficiently. When ingested gluten molecules first reach the small intestine, they are absorbed through the intestinal epithelium into the next layer called the lamina propria. Once there, some molecules are taken up by antigen-presenting cells, which are part of the non-specific immune system, and they present the gluten molecules on their surface. In someone with celiac disease, specialized immune cells called T cells recognize these molecules as being foreign antigens, and this triggers the release of cytokines which are molecules that cause inflammation. These T cells then stimulate another type of specialized immune cell called B cells, which then release autoantibodies that attack the recognized gluten antigen, leading to further inflammation. Prolonged inflammation eventually results in damage to the small intestinal lining in the form of flattened villi and cell death among pterocytes. The reduced surface area of the intestinal lining and the destruction of its epithelial cells subsequently leads to the malabsorption of nutrients by the small intestine. Due to the inflammation and damage in the small intestine, some intestinal symptoms such as stomach pain, bloating, and diarrhea can occur. The malabsorption of nutrients can also lead to more general symptoms such as fatigue and weight loss, as well as anemia due to iron deficiency and osteoporosis due to reduced calcium and vitamin D in circulation. However, there are also many people with milder forms of the disease who are entirely asymptomatic. A few diagnostic stages must be completed to verify celiac disease. First, a doctor will perform a physical examination. They will check for signs of weight loss and growth problems that may arise from malnutrition or malabsorption caused by untreated celiac disease. They will also check the abdomen for pain and swelling around the small intestine. One very common sign of celiac disease is a red itchy rash called dermatitis herpetiformis. This is another allergic reaction towards gluten that manifests in the skin rather than the intestinal tract. The rash presents on the elbows, knees, back, and scalp, and about 10 to 20% of adults with celiac exhibit this rash, sometimes as their only symptom. After a physical assessment, doctors will conduct some informative tests to determine the likelihood of whether celiac is truly the cause of their patient's symptoms. One necessary procedure is a serologic test. This type of test examines the presence and concentration of relevant antibodies in a patient's blood. High levels of specific antibodies may indicate an extreme sensitivity to gluten antigens. Examples of such antigens include the gliadin protein and an enzyme called tissue transglutamase that modifies gliadin in a way that enhances the body's immunological reactivity to the protein. It is possible for patients with other autoimmune disorders to have significant levels of these same antibodies. Therefore, high antibody concentration alone is not enough to diagnose the disorder, but gives probable cause for further examination. Unaffected people have very low levels of these antibodies. 
Celiac disease can be ruled out for anyone who receives negative test results. It is important to note that serologic testing must be done while the patient is still on a gluten-containing diet. The test evaluates the body's reaction to the presence of gluten. Therefore, gluten must be consumed and available in the body leading up to and at the time of testing. Another option is genetic testing. These tests look for the genes that predispose a person to celiac. DNA is collected from a cheek swab or blood sample and is analyzed for the celiac-related genetic markers. If the DQ2 and DQ8 genes are not present, the possibility of having celiac disease is very unlikely and can be ruled out. Like positive serologic tests, the presence of these genetic markers is not enough to definitively diagnose celiac, but does merit further testing. To confirm the suspected diagnosis, the state of the intestinal lining must be examined via a gastrointestinal endoscopy. In this procedure, an endoscope, which is a long flexible tube equipped with a camera, is inserted into the mouth and down the length of the gastrointestinal tract until it reaches the first portion of the small intestine called the duodenum. Doctors then will pass a special instrument through the endoscope to take a small piece of tissue called a biopsy from the duodenum to examine more closely. A pathologist will analyze the tissue sample under a microscope for signs of celiac disease. They will either see healthy long villi or flattened damaged villi consistent with celiac disease. When multiple biopsies show consistently abnormal results, a doctor can confidently diagnose his or her patient with celiac disease. The best and most effective way to treat celiac disease is to eliminate the ingestion of gluten. Ceasing all consumption of gluten allows the small intestine to heal from previous damage, often returning to normal. A gluten-free diet completely avoids the gluten-containing grains. Many celiac patients work with specialized dietitians to create healthy, balanced, gluten-free diets. Patients should also pay attention to the non-food items they come in contact with that secretly contain gluten. These items include herbal, vitamin, and mineral supplements, some prescription and over-the-counter medications, as well as some cosmetics and hygienic products. By being mindful and cautious about what they eat and interact with, people with celiac disease can recover from their symptoms very quickly and continue to live a healthy life.